In the Verdun Regional Natural Park, there are small populations of a rare and protected butterfly, the Apollo. This magnificent butterfly is an emblematic species of the mountains of Eurasia. But as it is regressing in many massifs, it is protected by law in France and appears on the red list of vulnerable insects. In Provence, this species flies in one generation from mid-June to late July, between 600 and 1,700 metres, although it is mainly present above 1,000 metres. The Apollo flies only in sunny weather and prefers to feed on the nectar of purplish coloured wildflowers, such as basket flowers, thistles and scabies. As soon as a cloud obscures the sky, this placid and not very shy butterfly lands, wings closed. This phenomenon may be due to the fact that this mountain butterfly is white, a colour that hardly absorbs heat. As soon as the sun appears, the butterfly opens its wings to absorb the most solar heat and forages to regain strength. The Apollo is decorated with large black spots on the upper side of its forewings and its hind wings have two red or orange eye spots surrounded by black. The spots fade over time. As soon as it feels threatened and is not warmed enough to fly away, the Apollo also opens its wings flat to the maximum to expose its bright red eye spots that look like eyes in order to scare birds and other predators. The Apollo has a wide variety of appearances, but the two sexes look alike. With its 80 millimeter wingspan, it is one of the largest butterflies in Europe. It is named after the Greek god Apollo, god of the arts, song, music, poetry, and male beauty. Here is a recently emerged female. She diffuses her pheromones to attract a male. When a male detects her, mating takes place.
following mating, the female goes in search of host plants. A torrent has formed a deep gorge in the landscape. The female rests on the plateau. The Apollo lays its eggs individually on stone crop, sedum or house leaf. It descends into the gorge where some host plants grow. At this location in the Oltvar, she deposits her eggs on or near sedum. At the end of fertilization, the male covers the female's genitals with secretions, forming a shell of proteins, the sphragis, which is a kind of chastity belt, which prevents any subsequent fertilization. The cream-coloured egg has a very thick core because it will have to endure the fiery heat of summer, then the thunderstorms of autumn, and finally the great cold of winter with intense frosts if it doesn't snow. In total, the egg is exposed to climatic hazards for almost eight months. Three weeks after egg laying, the little caterpillar is already well formed inside the egg. However, it stays in fully diapause until spring. It is snowing and a thick glare covers the ground protecting the eggs from the cold. It is only after seven to nine months that the caterpillar hatches from the egg. Between February and March, when the snow has melted and the temperature reaches 18 degrees centigrade, because the corian of the egg is thick, it takes a long time for the caterpillar to make a hole large enough to come out. It is only after about two or three hours that the caterpillar finally manages to get out of the egg. The small caterpillar, barely five millimetres, is a velvety black which makes it difficult to see, even at close range. In early February, another caterpillar hatches the same day from an egg laid on sedum. Twenty days later, the caterpillars have molted and reached their second larval instar. They shelter from the cold and the rain under stones or hidden in the sedum and feed as soon as the sun shines. They rest for long periods in the sun to absorb the heat. 
The caterpillars are now decorated with yellowish spots on the sides. Stealth camouflage has morphed into mimetic camouflage as the combination of yellow spots on a black body are warning colours of organisms which are poisonous with a repellent taste to predators. At the third instar, the caterpillar has grown well and the yellow spots are more distinct. The caterpillars indulge in prolonged sunbathing and then feed. Gradually, the spots become more orange. As soon as it feels threatened, the caterpillar remains motionless. A wall lizard feeds on small insects, including caterpillars. From the fourth instar, the caterpillar travels longer distances and the spots become more reddish. Around May to June, the mature caterpillar leaves in search of a sheltered place to pupate under moss or under a stone. It prepares its metamorphosis. A few days later, the transformation into a chrysalis takes place. The skin tears off just behind the head, releasing the chrysalis. The freshly formed chrysalis is green-brown and is decorated with white eye spots. The shape of the wings with the veins of pale green colour is clearly visible. The old skin remains attached to the end of the chrysalis. The next day, the chrysalis is entirely covered with a clear bluish bloom, a sort of waxy, slightly powdery layer. Shortly before emergence, the markings on the wings are visible through the more transparent casing. After about 10 days, or even several weeks, 
and depending on weather conditions and altitude, the butterfly appears. The butterfly moves to a place outside the vegetation to be able to spread its wings without damaging them. Its wings swell with the influx of hemolymph. The wings need to dry and harden, which takes about an hour before the butterfly can fly away. It needs to adjust its proboscis, then flies off. With its proboscis, it sucks the sweet liquid, which provides the energy to fly. To survive, the Apollo needs special climatic conditions, harsh winters and sunny summers. It also requires wide open space, such as flowering alpine meadows, as well as the presence of host plants for its offspring.